Okay, let's continue on with our getting started guide for uh, Restrict Content Pro. And a lot of these the remaining options, again, are very self-explanatory. There's not a whole lot of head scratching here involved in getting Restrict Content Pro running on your new membership website. Um, but very important piece of that, of course, is getting paid. Uh, you might be just using Restrict Content Pro for free aspects to gather people and create a community, and that's that's good. <clears throat> but a lot of us doing this are looking for a transaction. We're looking to get paid some some money for our membership or our restricted content. Um, by default, you have PayPal and the three variations of PayPal, PayPal Standard, Express, and Pro. Uh, and then you have Stripe, Stripe Checkout, and Two Checkout. Uh, all available for uh, or in the core of Restrict Content Pro without having to install another add-on. Uh, I believe there is a uh, another add-on for Restrict Content Pro for Braintree um, payment gateways, and I'll just hop on over to the site real quick, take a look at the official add-ons page, and yes, there is. So there's Braintree if you also use Braintree, which is another popular um, payment gateway. So <clears throat> back to the options. Look, if you are, you know, my only words of advice are if you're looking for like this annual sort of one-time payment kind of thing uh, or lifetime membership thing, you can run with PayPal Standard. What PayPal Standard won't do is the recurring billing. So if you want to go into a monthly or, a, uh, or even a, a yearly annual uh, recurring payment, PayPal Standard will not do that, at least at the time of this recording. Uh, you need to kind of upgrade to Express or Pro in order to get the recurring payments through PayPal. That said, you could sign up for a Stripe account and connect your checking to your Stripe account, and that will certainly do um, recurring payments. You just don't, people can't pay with their PayPal account, obviously, if, they're, if you're having them enter their credit card. So what you, which is very common is to have your PayPal account run with a Stripe account. That way you can accept credit cards right on your site with, with Stripe. Um, and if people want to check out and use their PayPal account to pay, they have the option of doing so, right? So they can definitely do that. <clears throat> um, so these are this is the, the the payments tab is where you set up all these these payment options. Again, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Uh, again, if you are setting up your PayPal uh, and you need to get API access, all that username stuff, there's plenty of documentation, uh, even linked right here. In fact, developer.paypal.com to set that stuff up. Uh, my word of advice is, hands down, the easiest account to set up is your Stripe account to accept a credit card right on your website. Now. What that means to you as the website owner is you will need to get SSL certification on or certificate on your installed on your website, HTTPS. You should be running that nowadays anyway. I think there's actually some good SEO uh, uh, juice that, that comes from having HTTPS enabled on your site. You can kind of re research that and look into that stuff as well. But anything that's uh, passing the secure data, especially membership information, credit card information, you need it at HTTPS. Um, 2016 at the time of this recording, so let's get with the times and get that stuff set up. If you're using a great hosting company like SiteGround, which I recommend, uh, they can install SSL for you on your website. In fact, they even have a free SSL certificate that you can use uh, through uh, a new uh, SSL service that just came out, so check that out as well. Let's move over to the emails tab. I thought about breaking this up into another video, but there's um, not a whole heck of a lot of stuff to talk about here because, again, it's all pretty self-explanatory. I talked about it a little bit in the overview video, and these are all the video, or excuse me, these are all the emails that go out at different stages of a membership. So, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, um, activate subscription. The first thing that somebody does is they come and they sign up to your site. Now your subscription email goes out and says, please activate. Um, cancel the subscription email. If they cancel, expire. This is the message that goes out when, you, when your account, when the membership account expires. And you might want to type in here like, hey, you know, sorry to see that your membership expired. Do you want to renew? Here's a link. Here's how you can get there. That kind of thing. Um, expiring soon. Free subscription email. Again, all fully self-explanatory. And you can kind of go through and fill these out. Uh, according to the different stages. One thing that I will highlight is you can kind of copy and paste these uh, template tags to say things like, hello, username. So I might do something like this. And let's just go to the canceled subscription. You can say, hi, username or user email. I copied the wrong one. Let me copy the right one. Paste that in there. So let's say if I'm registered, I might say, hi, Matt. Um, 
Sorry to see that you canceled. Is there anything we can do better? Question mark. And then you could even say, you know, please take this survey. You know, I'm not going to cover that in this video, of course, but you could create a, uh, a survey using your Gravity Forms plugin, your Ninja Forms plugin. Uh, survey Monkey is another popular uh, service for creating hosted surveys, and you could link that right here, and then you can get some feedback, right? But the point of this part is you can tailor these emails um, to pretty much however you want to correspond with the folks signing up to your website. Uh, PDF invoices, again, super simple. I really like the fact that this was included because people can download PDF invoices, especially if it's a business expense to be a member to your website. And you can customize your invoices through this. Upload your logo, company name, again, super self-explanatory. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, the miscellaneous page. Hide premium post. I talked about this in the overview video. I think this is a really cool feature um, because what will happen is sometimes a lot of us have a search box on our on our WordPress site. And especially if we're bloggers, we've been blogging for years and we want to have <clears throat> a particular category now part of a paywall. But what will happen is people will search with your WordPress search box and this restricted content that you don't want to show up in search results will still show up in search results. <laughs> um, if you check this off, hide premium post, it will only show up to people who have paid for a membership, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, if the person that does search for that or tries to get access to that page, this little redirect um, that you can indicate right here will send that you can say which page you want it to go to. <clears throat> you can set up this page. Sorry, my allergies are killing me. You can set up this page and it'll redirect you to, let's say, an upsell page. So we, you could say something like, hey, saw that you search for, you know, ultimate guide for WordPress. Just want to let you know that that is a premium piece of content only. Um, you know, please subscribe here or, or please sign up here. You can set all that stuff up uh, on that page. And I think that's a really cool feature. Um, I'm really glad that that's available in the core of Restrict Content Pro. <laughs> Um, other options throughout the rest of this of rest of this page um, prevent account sharing. That's pretty awesome too. Um, for years, I think a lot of membership plugins were forgetting to add this, or they just simply weren't thinking about it. But as online education and online memberships become more mainstream, a lot of us, like you and I, we're learning this way. We're we're seeking out memberships or uh, membership sites. We're finding these online educators. We're really building a rapport with them. And um, it's actually a big business. So it's important for if I were creating a course, I don't want people sharing an account. That means that it's lost revenue for me. Um, and it's lost value for the rest of the people subscribing to the membership, right? Because now it sort of gets diluted. Um, and we want to be able to sort of build the best value as possible. This simple little <laughs> check mark here will stop people from logging into accounts at the same time, which is really cool. Uh, email IPN reports. This is great for PayPal, especially if you're the developer type. Uh, disable form CSS. What we saw in the registration form, uh, let me pull up a incognito window. This is my Baton Pro theme uh, available at slocumthemes.com. This is a theme that we just recently re released. So this is what uh, the form fields look like through Restrict Content Pro. This is the styling. So uh, let's just see, and I haven't even tested this before off video, so let's disable the form CSS. This should uh, stop any CSS that that Restrict Content Pro is loading um, to make those forms look the way they do. should stop that from applying any CSS. And my theme should take over, hopefully, uh, on those form fields. So as you can see, yes, our standard, <clears throat> excuse me, our standard form fields uh, now look like form fields that this theme styles. And basically what this does is say, as a designer or a developer, I can now go in and style these to make it look differently. So if you don't want uh, Restrict Content Pro CSS to get in the way, you can check mark that or check that off. That'll disable the styles like you saw here and it just defaults the core styling of the theme that you're using, giving you the ability to go in and style that. That's a mouthful, but let's just show you an example one more time. I'm gonna uncheck that save it. I'm going to load that page again. I'm going to hit refresh. This will bring the styles back. So now it's going to say, hey, Restrict Content Pro, we like the styles that you had. Maybe it looked good with our theme. Maybe it didn't. Let's hit refresh. 
boom, now the styles are back. You can see it's a little bit tighter, a little, you know, things are a little bit smaller, a little bit more condensed. Um, so if this fits great with your theme, perfect, roll with it. If it doesn't, or for whatever reason you want to customize your registration form, uh, you want to uncheck those styles. Pretty cool feature, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, lastly, reCAPTCHA. Uh, we've all probably seen this before. This is the stuff that stops spam from people registering for accounts, especially if you have a free membership level for your website. More than likely, you'll get, at some point, <laughs> being on the internet, you'll get somebody who registers uh, strictly out of spam or for spam, or some robot will register to spam your site. Uh, by putting in and registering your site with reCAPTCHA, you can put this uh, key in here and that'll protect you from, or to a degree anyway, registrations, uh, spam bot registrations, right? So that's the overview, right? That's two videos. This is the getting started with Restrict Content Pro. In the next videos, we'll set up, uh, we'll take a look at restricting content. In fact, the actual use of the plugin, we'll review that. Hope you like it. If you like do like the video, go ahead and hit like below, share it, friends, family, and the internet. As always, it's plugintut.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you.